All right, guys and gals, we're back on this is video two on this Z50 build where we put a 140 in it. It's an electric start engine. Uh, this is Josh, J Vintage Honda Minis, Orlando, Florida. Uh, so I'm going to go over in this video, focus on the electrical. I've done some mods uh, on the frame to put a brake switch and uh, you know some more motorcycle-like functionalities. So check out the first video if you want to see that. Uh, again, this one's going to be focused on the electrical and getting uh, the original OEM harness style working with a 12 volt engine with electric start. So I'm going to be using uh, a replica harness of the K2 hardtail Z50 main harness and the K2 key switch. Uh, brake lines that have the uh, brake switches built into them so we're going to get brake light functionality. Uh, I'm going to use the headlight switch for high low dimming. Um, so this is kind of the original setup based on a six volt bike, but it'll be fine with the 12 volt current going through it. I'm just gonna change my light bulbs to 12 volts, and that's pretty much all we gotta do to get prepared for it. Then this came with the engine itself. It came with a harness, which I'm not using, but I'm gonna use the high tension coil, 12 volt coil. This is a starter solenoid. We have the CDI box and then the 12 volt rectifier, which I believe is a full wave setup. I also bought a kill switch that I'm going to add into the wiring. Um, this is a KS kill switch. Uh, I got that from T Trail Buddy along with the Trail Buddy. I'm going to use their sub harness, which is a nice piece. It's got everything labeled for where it should go. And that part is TB420. All right, it's made for a YX and a Zongshan engine. Sure that when we mount this key switch, clean up the mount bracket, the inner part, so this can ground into the frame area. So we'll clean that off with a file mount the key and then run the harness and then I'm going to check for lengths of particular cables to make sure that uh, it can work on the frame. If not, I'll do some extension leads. Test fit of the uh, back, the K2 harness here um, is good. There's enough lead able to get to the back tail light, uh, wires out the front headlight. I took my kill switch and I mounted it down on the lower part and there's plenty of lead here to get all the way back to my battery tray and my um, starter solenoid so I'm going to start focusing on the sub harness and the solenoid uh, starter setup I don't know if I call that a kill switch I meant that's my starter button I don't my kill switch is my key switch so I'm gonna just kind of pre-mount my solenoid and then work on the wiring for that but I think I'm gonna use these two mounts here this little rubber um, shield holder for the solenoid uh, I'll just run a big zip tie down and through and up and then hold it in place and then the seat should have enough clearance once it's bolted to have that uh, sitting under there I'm not going to try and shove all this stuff in behind here I'm going to save that for the rectifier uh, CDI and the extra sub harness this is my little diagram of how I'm going to run my start button to the battery to the starter solenoid so if you want to follow this just pause the video or I might be able to put an image in there for it to hold for you. Uh, so I'm just going to run start button. Got my lead run into my solenoid. It's going to run up to the negative and the positive leads are going to come from the starter and the solenoid and then it goes to the engine. Make my own little connector here with uh, the female spade connector and some eyelet grounding. And I'm going to make these into little terminals that can take on a couple wires and bring them to each terminal on the battery the positive terminal blocks soldered up here that are going to accept more wires and I got my basic wiring set up now it's time to get the sub harness we're going to get this guy wired in and I'll reference back to this little diagram uh, so what I'm doing with the sub harness right now is this is part of the sub harness and I am going to connect on the sub harness there's this positive lead one of the I connectors will go to the terminal on the positive terminal and then the extension lead is going to go up to the lug 
on the solenoid, okay? And then this other solenoid, as we're looking here, and then the other lug on that solenoid is fed to the starter lead, which is on the engine, at the starter engine. So they're going to have another pilot that you're going to connect at the solenoid. This is the current state uh, of wiring. It's a, looks like a mess, but there's a lot of wiring since we're doing a main harness and a sub harness. And now I got the battery in it. Uh, we're going to have to tuck it in between or behind this battery, which is going to you know, butt up against this cavity, butts up against the exhaust pipe that runs on the right side. So uh, I ordered a some silicone, like a turbo intercooler silicone uh, piping, I guess, uh, that I'm going to cut and then use some stainless steel uh, clamps to kind of build a protective layer around the bunch. You know, I'm going to nicely um, organize these wires and then close it off uh, inside the uh, silicone hose. Uh, and clamp it down so it's it's protecting it and then I got some turbo uh, or exhaust uh, heat barrier uh, peel and stick uh, I'm gonna put on the uh, um, inner facing of the exhaust pipe I just want to keep this area nice and cool uh, and not melt any wires but uh, it works as far as starting goes uh, the key switch is working where I can turn off and on spark uh, so that all that is working and verified I'm going to just clarify again and kind of recap what I did with this. So, you know, I got this K2 style harness that I went with. The reason I went with the K2 was because it has uh, the brake pedal on that year bike. I'm using, you know, these K3 and up soft tails have a brake pedal. So I welded on the uh, bracket to put a brake switch on. So this harness is set up for a pedal uh, foot brake switch too. And, and uh, in addition to the hand brake switch, um, the... I showed you the diagram of how to get your starter button to work with your uh, battery, 12 volt battery in the solenoid. You know, the battery itself is not running through the standard harness. I am just using a 12 volt battery to power this solenoid and start the engine through this uh, electric starter engine uh, motor down here. Uh, the other thing that I did uh, that was of, of a change was this is a hard, this is the lead that comes out from the stator from this engine. Uh, I had to cut the bullet connectors off and put a um, nylon um, terminal here. I built that. I have a bunch of spare parts because I wanted it to be nice and plug and play with this harness that came from Trail Buddy. So uh, this is a five wire uh, full wave um, electrical system on this bike. Uh, Trail Buddy uh, has six wires. The only real difference, I would say, is because it has a option for neutral switch, which this bike does not provide. So it's a five wire to a six wire lead on the Trail Buddy. Um, again, everything else is kind of plug and play and should just plug right in with the uh, follow the um, follow the descriptions on the wire. So this is going to be the CDI box that hooks into the sub harness. Uh, I have the high tension coil that leads to your spark plug that just plugs in where it says to plug in the um, full wave rectifier plugs in where, where the rec typical rectifier plug is at the uh, you got a couple grounding wires that are gonna be you're gonna ground your battery to your battery and I'm just gonna add I'll run this differently but I'm gonna have an extra frame ground and then the other part of that sub harness, it has another lead that runs uh, so you can run everything through your stock harness. So this is this is a part of the sub harness plugging into the factory style old, you know, six volt style wire harness. Uh, all you need to do since now 12 volts can be running through here from the stator of the engine um, for the accessories, the lighting is change your bulb out to a 12 volt style bulb in the front, 12 volt bulb on the back you're gonna be good to go uh, and then I verify that my key switch that's wired in line with the factory style harness uh, I don't get any spark until I turn the key on uh, and then I'm gonna do like the final testing once I get my heat wrap for my wiring and I feel better about running the engine and not melting wires and I'll do like the full test to make sure my brake lights work and everything else but I'll make that in the last video this is just kind of like the uh, uh, this will just be a, like uh, more of the 
90% uh, getting you set up to test the bike once it's running. Uh, a nice little aftermarket uh, foot pegs, a uh, little shorty adjustable uh, kickstand so I'll make it so I can adjust it to the exact uh, angle on the height of this bike uh, for it to sit nicely and not lean too much. But I do need to get some spacers, some longer bolts because this electric start engine is deeper and wider uh, than these standard um, foot pegs were designed for. So I'm going to get some long bolts and some spacers and just drop it down maybe uh, half an inch or um, three quarters or something like that. Consider this a wrap on the electrical video. Uh, and like I said, we'll, well, next video will be when it's kind of completely assembled and I'm test riding it and getting the carb tuned up. Uh, maybe I'll make a segment on this carb uh, that came with this. Um, it's a nip, nibby carb, but it's kind of a off size um, model. If you Google it, it's kind of only sold through a few outlets. It's not the typical nibby that you'll find on eBay or um, uh, Amazon or such so I ordered some jets and uh, there's no info on kind of a starting point so I'm hopefully uh, given the right jets to begin with if not I bought a bunch of extra jets to get it to the right um, you know ratio for fuel all right uh, subscribe if you don't guys it helps me um, with this channel building it um, appreciate it